Greetings fellow nerds. In this video we're going to make nitric acid by oxide precipitation. In a previous video I made sulfuric acid by a rather unusual process of precipitation with oxalic acid. Basically metal oxalates are extremely insoluble so by mixing the relatively weak oxalic acid with a metal sulfate like iron sulfate we can make the much stronger sulfuric acid as the formation of the metal oxalate drives the reaction forward. While somewhat expensive due to the cost of getting iron sulfate and oxalic acid, it was a somewhat viable way to make sulfuric acid. So the question naturally arises, if the more sought after nitric acid could be obtained this way. And indeed it can be and that's what we'll be exploring in this video. First we start with 300 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate which is easily obtained as a fertilizer. Then to this we add 1 liter of water and stir until dissolved. You can also use other forms of calcium nitrate as long as it's used in excess compared to oxalic acid then it will work. Refer to my video on making nitrates to get the more nitrate equivalents for other versions. You might be asking if you can use nitrates other than calcium nitrate. You can as long as they form insoluble oxalates with oxalic acid. Unfortunately the most common ones, potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate do not. Manganese nitrate and iron nitrate should work, but they're more expensive than calcium nitrates, so I recommend calcium nitrates. Anyway, while that's dissolving, we get 150 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate and to that we add 300 milliliters of water. Then we heat that up to dissolve. Once it's all in solution, add directly to the calcium nitrate solution. What's happening is the calcium nitrate is reacting with the oxalic acid to form highly insoluble calcium oxalate. Normally you can't make a stronger acid like nitric acid from a weaker acid like oxalic acid. But the solubility of calcium oxalate is so low that it drives the reaction forward and allows for the formation of nitric acid. Anyway, filter off the calcium oxalate and collect the filtrate. And there it is, very crude nitric acid. Because we use an excess of calcium nitrate we'll need to distill it. But first we'll reduce our volume so it's easier to manage. We install on top of the flask a Vigro distillation column that I've wrapped in aluminum foil to keep the heat in. The column is open to air and we gently boil down our nitric acid. What we're doing is a fractional distillation to remove the excess water. But rather than collect the water we're just letting it evaporate into the fumigate exhaust. We're doing this now to save time later when we distill the nitric acid. Otherwise we'd have to spend time distilling the, all this water and then fraction distill again to concentrate our nitric acid. You might be asking if we could save time by simply using less water to dissolve the reagents and maybe dissolve the calcium nitrate with heating. You absolutely can and indeed other amateurs have done it that way. Theoretically there is a reduction in yield when using highly concentrated reagents, but then again this boiling process also reduces yield a little so I'm not sure which pathway is better. I'll leave that to the community to figure out. Anyway boil it down to about 400 milliliters of volume and then let it cool until it stops boiling. Then switch out the setup and convert to distillation setup. Now simply distill over all the liquid and leave behind the excess calcium nitrate or oxalic acids as well as any ammonium nitrate. My calcium nitrate has ammonium nitrate in it as well and ammonium nitrate doesn't precipitate with oxalic acid so it can't be used in this method. This is why I used an excess of nitrates to ensure all the oxalic acid could be used. Anyway we completely distill that over until dry. And here is our distillate. It's pretty dilute so I'm going to install another Vigro column and once again I'm boiling off the excess water. I didn't boil off more water earlier because I wasn't sure how much I needed to boil off. I didn't know how much unreacted precursor reagents there were so I couldn't just eyeball volume. But now that we've distilled it we know this solution is entirely nitric acid and water without any salt or reactants. So we can confidently boil off more of the water. Now assuming we have a perfect yield, we'd expect to get about 150 milliliters of concentrated azeotropic nitric acid. So we boil down to about 200 milliliters so we can do a density check. If you prefer you can do a fractional distillation and get azeotropic nitric acid directly at this point. Anyway, doing our density check, 
we have a collected product of 223 grams of nitric acid at a density of 1.311 grams for a concentration of about 50% for this temperature. That gives us an actual yield of 111 grams of nitric acid out of an expected 150 grams, or about 74% yield. This is actually an excellent yield for such a crude process. This makes oxalic acid a viable alternative to sulfuric acid and sodium bisulfate acids when making nitric acid. Oxalic acid is much less restricted, and I find this filtering process much easier to handle and clean than calcium sulfate precipitates when using sulfuric acid. Anyone that has made nitric acid with calcium sulfate byproducts can attest it's absolutely awful to filter and deal with. Many amateurs go through the trouble and expense of converting calcium nitrate into sodium or potassium nitrates just so they don't have to deal with calcium sulfate. But this oxalic acid process lets us skip that. I'll personally still use sulfate based methods for my nitric acid just because of cost as I can get large quantities of sodium bisulfate. But if you can get large quantities of oxalic acid, then this oxalate based process might be the better option for making nitric acid as calcium nitrate is also easy to get. The only major drawback is that it doesn't produce fuming nitric acid directly since we need to dissolve the chemicals in water first. But I've already shown how to upgrade nitric acid to azeotropic and fuming nitric acid in a previous video. Links are in the video description. Now some of you may be asking if using an excess of oxalic acid would give a better yield. Maybe oxalic acid is the cheap reagent for you and calcium nitrate is the expensive one. So I gave it a try and mixed 300 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate along with 300 grams of oxalic acid. I went through the same process of boiling it down and distilling it, but I noticed the solution producing a lot of nitrogen dioxide gas as it distilled. A lot more than when calcium nitrate was used in excess. What's happening was the excess oxalic acid was reacting with the nitric acid high temperatures and decomposing it. I found the yield to be 67%, and this is already after I accounted for the ammonium nitrate. So the process is likely just as effective as with excess calcium nitrate, but the decomposing oxalic acid reduces the yield slightly. So the best results might be using exactly stoichiometric quantities of reagents or a slight excess of calcium nitrate to get the most nitric acid for the lowest cost. Anyway, that was how we make nitric acid from calcium nitrate with oxalic acid, a surprisingly effective alternative to sulfuric acid. Thanks for watching. Special thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making these science videos possible with their donations and their direction. If you're not currently a patron but would like to support the continued production of science videos like this one, then check out my Patreon page here or in the video description. I really appreciate any and all support.